particularly uh, the, the, the orienting illusions uh, are not uh, uh, are at work. Uh, at work. Uh, have you ever uh, noticed uh, how how uh, how when uh, spinning will uh, reach a certain certain speed, uh, the so-called uh, wagon wheel uh, effect uh, kicks in and it uh, starts looking like it's uh, actually uh, turning backward. Uh, or how how even though uh, that. Uh, uh, it it can uh, uh, barber shop uh, fall uh, rotate uh, horizontally. Uh, it looks like uh, uh, those the stripes are moving up and down. Uh, well, a head of moving uh, zebra uh, can induce both those uh, uh, types of uh, uh, optic optical illusions, helping to further uh, confuse uh, predators. Great. Predators. Great job. Really good. Let me go to Marek. It also seems that striping may help ward off biting insects, which is awesome because a lot of insects have diseases. Horse flies, for example, are typically attracted to dark colors over light ones. But researchers have recently found out that narrow, densely packed striping is basically the least attractive coloration to hungry horse flies less appealing than either solid black or solid white. So maybe these stripes are, actually, uh, are a natural bug repellent. Wunderbar. And uh, Miguel? And interestingly, zebra stripe patterns are as unique as fingerprints. No two are the same. So they may even help the animal recognize each other. There you have it. Zebra stripes, fables and, uh, and function. Excellent job. You guys did really good. Now, this is uh, Hashmik's first time uh, reading uh, with us on DDM VIP. And uh, Hashmik, uh, you did a really good job. Um, do you speak English every day? Make sure your microphone is on, Hashmik. Uh, no, I don't speak at all. Yeah, I, you. I, 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 I'm training. Yeah, I'm training to speak. I I guess in Armenia there are not many chances to speak English. Yes. Right. Well, you you did a great job. Very very good. Let's uh, hit this word here. Uh, this is a tough word. The word is mammalian, but usually we just say mammal. But anyway, let's practice this. Mammalian world. Mammalian world. Very good. Your R's and L's sound really good. That's it for the first section. Let me go to Marek. And Hashmik, once again, please mute your mic. That's where the echo is coming from. Thank you. Uh, Marek, you use the French pronunciation. What's the American pronunciation? Camouflage. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure now. <laughs> it's this is where there's a schwa. Cama. Camouflage. Oh, okay. Camouflage. There you go, exactly. Uh do you do you ever use camouflage? Uh I don't have a need for it, I guess. You don't go hunting? Uh no, no, I'm not a hunter. You you don't hide from your wife? Uh I just uh, moving away somewhere you know. <laughs> <laughs> very good get out of her way that's right you get out of her way and then you have no problems and give me the uh, American even the Canadian a lack of there you go the distinct lack of zebra print environments the distinct lack of zebra print environments in nature excellent and this one again, please. Because to a colorblind lion. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and this also is this a lion, lion, lion. Uh, be careful with the L's and the R's. It sounded really good. Very good. And Miguel, you also use the French pronunciation. Oh, c'est magnifique. Okay. Uh, camouflage. Cam. 
Camera. Camouflage. There you go. That's right. And this G is actually like a ZH. Whoops, not an SH. A ZH. Camp. What the hell? Uh, sorry. Camera. Camouflage. Camouflage. Excellent. Camouflage. Okay. Let's do this one. Striped equines. Uh, striped equines. Okay. So let's do the whole sentence. Try it again. Is the big one. Okay. A herd of striped equines may look like just a big blob of crazy. Yeah, excellent job. Very good. And let me go back to Hashmik. And I want you, Hashmik, to get the A sound in this case. So wagon wheel effect. So wagon wheel effect. Wagon wheel effect. Excellent job. And here too, be careful with the A's. Turning backwards. Backwards. Excellent. Very good. And the American pronunciation is iconic. Iconic. So even though that iconic barbershop pole. Even though that iconic barbershop pole. Excellent job. Very good. And predator. Uh, so let's use the T. Predators. Predators. Very good. And most Americans change this to a D. Predators. Predators. Excellent job. Very good. Very good. And let me go on to Marek. I got an R for you. Oh. The least attractive coloration. Very good. Least attractive coloration. Get more A here, too. One more time, please. The least attractive coloration. Very good. Are a natural bug, bug repellent. Are a natural bug repellent. Natural. Natural bug repellent. Attractive. Attractive. Yeah, that was perfect. Yeah, that A, that short A sound. That if you don't hit that short A sound, it gives you that European flavor. Yeah. yeah. I notice Shane that intonation actually changes a lot. Because if uh, I say it, in, you know, don't use the correct intonation. Also, to, the pronunciation is not, it's much harder. It's, it changes, doesn't it? Yeah. And when you say the A, you're forced yeah. to use more intonation, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. And if you say A, then, for example, D is much easier to say, like, uh, advertise. Yes. And start with advertise. It's very, very hard. Advertise if you add, add the, makes so much easier. Well, it's I think that's natural way to say it. Yeah, and that's exactly right. Um, and I want everybody to remember: in America, we love the schwa sound, the schwa sound. So in this sentence, in this word, for example, uh, we've got two vowel, or th I'm sorry, three vowel sounds, and in words with more than one syllable, usually everything is a schwa except one. So in this case, we could change all of this to a schwa and just keep that. And now the sound is attractive, attractive, attractive. The same thing here, nat-ch, ch, it's actually a schwa, a schwa. But then when you have R's and L's, it kind of changes. But anyway, this is actually kind of a schwa too. Natural, natural. So one thing that's really important to remember is if there's intonation on a specific syllable, then you really have to be careful with the pronunciation. And everything else, you can probably change to a schwa. And that's really going to help a lot. And Marek, that's exactly what you're talking about. Let me jump down to Miguel. Another example of schwa sound, maybe? Uh, no, I want you to read this. A animals, okay. So they, they may even help the animals recognize each other. Very good. And let's go ahead and look at uh, the schwa sound. Uh, eh. 
No. No. Uh -huh. Moles. Animal. Animals. 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 And what about this? Uh, is it possible to say regarding the the other one, nat natural, natural? Is it possible to hear uh, natural, natural? Oh, like, definitely. Yeah, definitely. We can have. Uh, yes. Uh huh. Yeah, natural, natural. Natural. Is yep. It, is that very common? Absolutely. The faster we say it, yes. Uh huh. So yeah. Now this and, this word's a little bit different. Uh, so we've got three. Once again, we have three vowels, uh, but in this word, only one schwa sound. Which is the schwa? Maybe the first. No. The o. Second. Yeah. So what's uh, the pronunciation? So you re re recognize. It's an eh, eh, recognize. Ah, re rec recognize, recognize. Yeah, and even the pronunciation is recognize. So it, it does. Ah. So this one, natural, uh, animal, recognize. So we do have rhythm in that word, too. Uh -huh. So they may even help the animals recognize each other. There you go. And what about this word? They be, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> this they is be, another, be, yeah, yeah. this is another tough one. Fabulous. 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 I got it. I got it. I think. <laughs> fabulous. There you go. Fabulous is not a word that men use very much. <laughs> I get your point. Yeah, this is a, a word that women love to use <laughs> and gay men. <laughs> that's true. Oh, that's fabulous. Oh, Hi. that's just fabulous. <laughs> uh, but he was. Uh, I don't. I'm not saying that the uh, the no, news guy was gay, <laughs> but I think he was uh, trying to make. Uh, a little bit yeah. of humor because the word fabulous and fashion uh, go together a lot. So fabulous, fashion, yeah. uh, that, that actually is a good combination. And he's talking about his, his hair. Fabulous yeah. and functional. You look fabulous tonight, honey. That's right. Yeah. So fabulous. <laughs> now, a guy can say fabulous, no problem. But say it to your wife or to your girlfriend. <laughs> Marek, do you use the word fabulous to your wife? Um, I don't think so. You should. Today. And, and, uh, actually, we, we don't speak in English. Uh, we speak in Polish. So. You never speak in English <laughs> with your so. wife? <laughs> well, it's a mixture. You know, at a certain point you start mixing up, but it's, uh, it's more Polish than, than English. Yeah. With my son, I speak more often English. Well, that's great. Uh, that's really cool. Um, when, you, uh, when you both came to Canada, you and your wife, uh, how old was your son? He was uh, in, uh, he went to the first grade, so it, he was six. So he was six. Yeah. So, so he was in school all day. Uh, you were probably yeah. looking for a job? No, no, I was working already. Oh, you already had a job? I got a job, you know, within two weeks. <laughs> oh, that's great. What did your wife do? Uh, when she came? Yeah. Oh, she went, uh, what she was doing? Jesus, it was so long time ago. Well, for a while she did not work, but then she, yeah, she went to, to school and uh, she works as a courier. Okay, so carried, yeah. Uh, as a what? Carried. That's a I, person that uh, you know uh, helps other people uh, in a medical situation. Okay, like a hospice, like a caretaker. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Th my and the reason I ask is many times immigrant families 
the man is busy, the children are busy, but the woman stays home and uh, gets very homesick. Was your wife okay? Well, uh, probably not at the beginning because it's you know completely new world here, and uh, she came also without uh, language. And uh, well, but what she survived. We have to adapt. Yeah, and uh, well, it takes you know they say it takes ten years to feel like at home. Yeah, and. I noticed that by myself. It took me about 10 years, and then when I went to the once to the States, when I was returning, I felt, oh, I'm going back home, you know, the, this feeling, uh, you left the country and you're coming back. And the same, I don't feel like if I travel to Poland, uh, I feel like going home, no. When I'm coming, and when I'm flying back to Canada, I feel like uh, going home. You're going home. That's that's oh, definitely. Uh, that's a, but that's after ten years. I right. I, that's a great story. I like that. That's uh, yeah. I, that's that's really nice. Even you know, Marek, I lived in Korea for over twenty years, and when I came back to America, it didn't feel like I was coming home. Um, it felt like I was going to a foreign country. Now. It's starting to, you know, feel a little bit more natural. Uh, the problem is, I do not like where I live. <laughs> uh, but why? Why don't you like it? Oh, it's it's. There's no nature. It's too hot. I can't go fishing. I can't do anything. But you see, at least you can move. When I lived in Poland, uh, it was not possible to move from city to city wow. basically it's not like you were not allowed to travel but you couldn't change the work your workplace it was very hard wow. so uh, that you were restricted like like hell by you know your your movements wow wow so you could travel to another city no, of course no problem to other yeah. countries but uh, because all the uh, you know uh, workplaces were uh, nationalized, and basically you you cannot just quit the job and go somewhere else. <laughs> wow! So it was kind of tough. Uh, yeah. yeah, it sounds it sounds. Uh, nice. You know, when I think about the whole situation in, in this socialist country, it looks now it's so ridiculous and. Uh, you know <laughs> the whole structure when you live and you 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 can get used to it when you live there but then when you look at it from a distance right then it oh jesus what what what, what people were doing then <laughs> yeah it, it that's and I, that's the thing if you have to be able to see something from the outside to understand if it's good or not yeah. good uh, the whole freedom of speech, you know, technically you could speak, but never officially against uh, the prime minister or something like that. I came to Canada, uh, to Canada and I watched the U.S. where people, you know, talking about uh, president like <laughs> whatever they wish to to say about him, swearing, Clinton, you know, yeah. Or, yeah. yeah, it was quite a shock, you know. I, well, those people might go to jail, I thought. You know. Wow. <laughs> Not in America. No. No. <laughs> All right. Great, great. Uh, okay. Questions on the first story. David Bowie. Oh, my goodness. This is embarrassing. Uh, he's British. Uh, we had camouflage here. Pretty cool pictures. Um, what else do we have? That's uh, real camoufla camouflage. Isn't that amazing? Camouflage. <laughs> That's yeah. That's just amazing. Yeah. Mother Nature. Yeah, Mother Nature. Beautiful. I know I'm talking too much, but may I make one comment? Sure. Uh, because I heard on the radio regarding those theories, and what I heard the last one is the correct one. Actually, they figure out it's uh, due to insects. They have the stripes. Aha. Uh -huh. 
So it's a, so this is probably the real reason that zebras have stress. Right. It's a natural yes, bugger exactly. bug. Exactly. Yeah, they they find they found correlation between some uh, those flies and also zebras have thinner skin. So it's really really useful for them to have this natural uh, bug repellent that's compared amazing. to other animals. Wow, that's really amazing. Yeah, I forgot other reasons, but... Uh, Where did you hear this? So, uh, there are many, you know, podcasts uh, regarding uh, science, and I, I listen to those. I can find it for you, but I, I'm not sure if you're that interested. <laughs> no, I would love it. Uh, and actually, I have your game show podcast, and I keep forgetting to share it with everybody. Uh, a brilliant podcast. Yeah, do you listen to a lot of podcasts? Now mostly. I used to listen a lot to the radio, but now radio is uh, kind of outdated. <laughs> Actually, I, I listen to the radio, but in the form of uh, podcasts. Yeah, that's right. I can do it on my own time, right? And yeah, yeah. I can mm -hmm. choose. Yeah, a podcast is better than the radio. If you want talk, if you want music, probably the radio is better. But if you want talk, podcasts are brilliant. Yeah. And regarding those uh, uh, game shows, did you hear about uh, Manti? What's the name? Manti? You know Manti the, the show Manti Hall Problem? No, I know Monty Hall, but I don't know about the Monty yeah. Hall problem. It was the most amazing thing. You know, the game shows are usually stupid and nothing comes out of this. But that was the only kind of uh, scientific thing that came out of the game show. I think it was in 1990. And uh, actually they made the reference in many movies to this problem. Um, I just found it on, yeah, this, oh, I have to read about this. This looks kind of interesting. Uh, I can't, well, I don't know maybe if you have that much time, but, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's the problem. Actually, in one of the movies, 21, with uh, Kevin Spacey. Okay. Actually, there, there is a, um, uh, on YouTube movie clip, he describes the problem. And it was huge, huge problem mathematical and actually it shakes your belief in intuition oh wow uh, yeah if you understand uh, the, this problem I mean that it's not not a problem it's just uh, the game show asks people which door to choose there is a prize blah 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 and everybody was choosing they thought the right the, 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 the right door and uh, in one of the uh, newspapers in New York, there was a column uh, written by uh, one lady. Her name was, I forgot. But at that time, she was the highest, uh, the person with the highest IQ, according to Guinness Book of Record. Oh. 220 something. Wow. Ask Marilyn, Marilyn De solve uh, anyway and she said uh, everybody is wrong uh, they should switch the door and then it was a big discussion and she received 10,000 letters I heard from uh, PhD mathematicians others thought that she was wrong she's she doesn't know what she's talking about and then people thought about it and she was right and actually wow. it's very interesting if you follow by yourself your logic and <laughs> it's really counterintuitive. Oh, so oh this is this is really amazing interesting yeah. stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was this uh, in numbers that's one. And yeah. I love Kevin Spacey. Well, he doesn't describe the problem that well, but you can find somewhere else but uh, yeah, actually this this clip it would well could be good for DDM or oh, maybe too too much scientific uh, no it, it sounds like I'm gonna have to watch it but it sounds good and what's perfect is it relates to another game show <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right 
No, that sounds that sounds great. That's, this sounds really interesting. I'm I'm gonna keep that page open. Excellent. Okay. Um, any questions about any of this stuff? Optical illusions. Uh, do you guys? Does everybody understand the barbershop pole? I did something interesting uh, with uh, students earlier, and uh, I'm going to do it with you right now. So I saw those poles, but I didn't know uh, they are just uh, barbershop only. Yeah. Related. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm going to take you to. Uh, Google Maps, and we're going to go to my hometown uh, in Wisconsin, and uh, we're going to go actually to the town south of me, which is called Phillips. Where is Phillips? Uh, it's so small, you have to get really close. Um, so this is Phillips, and this is, believe it or not, this is the downtown. This one street is the downtown. So I'm going to take you downtown and we're gonna walk along here and uh, there's a barber shop there's a barber shop coming up and um, here it is can you can you see the barber shop? Here it is. Now, yeah. it doesn't say barber. If you look anywhere, there's no. It doesn't say barber anywhere. But you can see this uh, pole. This is the barber shop pole, and this guy actually has two of them. And this is in America the symbol of the barber shop. If you go to the other stores, usually they'll have. Uh, uh, some sort of sign as to what they are, cafe, whatever. Um, uh, I don't even know what these things are. Dollar store, bank, uh, things like that. Uh, but this building has nothing except for the barber uh, pole. And this is iconic. If you go uh, in America and you see this, this is not a place for women to get their hair cut. It's a place for guys to get their hair cut. And the barber is usually, I don't know, a 60 or a 70-year-old guy uh, who mm -hmm. talks about sports and hunting and mm -hmm. cuts your hair. Uh, <laughs> so this is the idea. So there you go, barbershop pole. And I'll show you a GIF. Hold on a second. If you don't know how it works, uh, barbershop pole animated GIF. That's what we want. Images and did this work? I can't remember which one worked. There we go. Ah, that's backwards. I don't like that. Not that one. Well, I guess that's the only one that works. So anyway, uh, the it actually moves horizontally, just left to right. But because of the colors, it looks like it's going up. Um, but of course, actually, it's not going up. It's only moving horizontally. So this is what we call an optical illusion. Uh, just like the wagon wheel effect, I think we can find a wagon wheel effect. Wagon wheel effect animated GIF. Um, maybe not. Are oh, they not going to show it? But I, thing is, uh, I, yeah, I have, have seen that. You know, I have seen that pole uh, uh, here in England and uh -huh. in Spain too. Maybe they copy it. I don't know. Uh, do, okay, because I've asked other students, and other students have said they they've never seen it in their country. Um, yeah. So I'm curious about that. Yeah. In Spain. Yeah. Yeah, what's the or origin of this? Pole? I don't know, and I, I regret not having done the research because uh, I think that would have been an interesting culture corner. So hopefully in the future, um, 
Barbershop Pole Origin. Can you go. Hard to connect this with. with the oh origin. yes, I do know. I do know the reason. Uh, barbers used to be surgeons, surgery, and this is a sign of bad blood, healthy blood. The it's the sign of blood. So blood that comes out of your body is, you know, the bad blood, and the blue blood in your body is the good blood. Oh. Yes, that's right. I I do uh, remember that. Yes. Origin and surgery. There you go. So these guys used to be surgeons. Not only did they cut your hair, but they would cut your body too. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks. It like makes sense. It makes sense today, because you know, with all those plastic surgery and hair styling. That's right. That's right. It's it's ridiculous. It's. Uh, nowadays, most surgeons are just like barbers, just making you look good. Dentists give you the, the injection of Botox, right? Dentists give you Botox? Yes, that's supposedly many, many of them quitting regular uh, teeth fixing for because there is more profit in. Oh my God, that's just terrible. Jeez, Marek, are you using Botox? Be honest. <laughs> As a camouflage. As a camouflage. Oh, yes. <laughs> wow. What about um, Hashmik? In Armenia, do you have barber poles? Uh, actually, this uh, sign. Uh, it uh, exists, but not for the laser shop. Oh, what 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 does it exist for? Uh, some um, stores are use uh, are using the. Okay, so kind of like a decoration, but some yeah. other stores do use it. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Good. Very good. So if you go to America, uh, remember. This is where boys get their hair cut. <laughs> Do you like the horse fly? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> it's actually kind of cute. Yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, when I saw this picture, I was like, oh my goodness. Is it, is it big fly or small horse? <laughs> exactly, that's a good question. I think it's a big fly. <laughs> That's better than a unicorn. Yeah, yes, it's scarier than a unicorn. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to close up DD117. Goodbye to that one. Don't save. And I'm going to open up DD118. DD118, of course, is Seinfeld. Um, bu -bu -bu -bu. So we've got, we need four people, so we only have uh, three of you. So I'm going to choose the lesser line, and which is that, Jerry, Toby, Kramer. Oh, there's a lot. Um, oh, let's do this. Uh, we'll have, uh, yeah. Who wants to be Kramer? I'll be Kramer. Okay. Then, Miguel, you are Kramer and Ronnie, all right? Okay, okay. And Marek, you are Jerry. And Hashmik, you will be Toby. Can you do Toby? <laughs> okay. Okay, go for it. Let's start at the beginning then, uh, and we'll start with uh, Jerry's line here. Hey, Ronnie. Hey. Could I have a club soda going on tonight? Yeah, you? Yeah. You know Werner Christian's here? Yeah, I know. Can I ask you something? Are my nostrils getting bigger? <laughs> I don't think so. Are you sure? Take a good look. They seem a little bigger. I don't... I don't know. Is it possible for nostrils to expand? Or is this a bit? 
Hey, I don't do bets. I'm a prop comic. Damn it, I can't find my war again. I can't go on without my war again. Oh, hey, Jerry. Hey. What? Wow, it's Tubby. That's Jerry. It's so exciting. I uh, look, I have this to bump. Uh, that's that's them. Uh, I've never uh, been uh, to a comedy club before. Really? You know, a lot of restaurants are serving root pickup now too. You you are so funny. <laughs> oh, you have a good time, I swear. Oh, he, he swears like he thinks I don't believe him. I believe you. I believe, I believe you. Oh, he's so funny. What about me? What about you? I'm only kidding. Uh, you're funny too. Uh, I love uh, to laugh. Good, good. So, you up next? Yeah. Why don't you guys get a table so you'll have a good seat? Uh, oh, yeah. We don't want uh, some some just uh, sitting in front of us. Uh, it will be like, uh, hey, big head, uh, can you move uh, other, uh, the other way? I didn't say uh, a cover charge to start uh, at, at your uh, bold spot. spot. All right, so you have a good show, huh, buddy? Yeah. Oh, have a great show. Hey, uh, we'll make sure it's, uh, it's a great show. Okay, good. I'll see you later. Uh, oh, uh, he's so great. Uh, this is uh, so great. I'm so excited. Oh, that was really excellent. You guys all did a great job. Uh, the intonation was really good. Uh, pronunciation sounded good. Let me hit a couple of things here. Now, Marek, you did perfect. You tried to cancel out the T. Uh, and this is one of those really tough ones. So the, the perfect pronunciation uh, going on tonight? Going on tonight? No, no, no. Say it perfectly. Oh, okay. Going on tonight? Going on. Now, actually, what I do want you oh, to do. Let, let me. Okay. I'm going to yes. change a couple of things here. So this is the perfect typical pronunciation. Can you try that again? Going on tonight? Yeah. Going on tonight? Going on tonight? Go, uh, get rid of the G. There's no G. Oh, okay. Going on tonight? Going on tonight? There you go. So what exactly uh, does this mean? Now, we had a con people were confused earlier. Going on tonight and going out tonight. What's the difference, Marek? Oh, you explained this. Uh, going on the stage tonight. That's right. So when we say on, it specifically means stage to perform. To perform is the key. Uh, what about going out tonight? What does that mean? Well, to go out for a date, going out to a restaurant. Uh, exactly. Going Some, sort of, also. Some sort of entertainment, right? Yeah. Exactly. And now, what Marek was doing is what exactly Jerry did. With that N, he did cancel out the T. And this is really tough to say it like a native speaker. Going on tonight? Try it again, Marek. Going on tonight? Going on tonight. Okay, Marek, you got to get rid of the G. There's no G okay. here. Going on tonight? Going on tonight. <laughs> yeah. And it's not new, it's N. Going on tonight? Going on tonight? Ah. <laughs> I have to work on it. <laughs> yes, yes, you work on it. So what I like to tell uh, everybody, uh, all the students, just say it with the T. Keep the T. That'll be easier for you. Going on tonight? Going on tonight. There you go. Marek, get rid of the G. Going on tonight? Uh, going on tonight. <laughs> there you go. Very good. Okay. You see, because I, I don't, uh, I don't say it fast enough. Also, I guess. Uh, yeah. Well, the speed Wait, wasn't tonight? really troubling me. It was no. this. You got that hanging G sound, and some oh. people do. Some people do. 
Um, so it's not necessarily wrong, but going on, going on. Let's just do these two. Going on? Going on. Going no. on. There you go. Going on. Going on. Going on. That sounded good. Going on tonight. <laughs> going on tonight. Going on tonight. <laughs> there you go. It sounds okay. All right, let me go to... Who, now, um, uh, Miguel, who is Leonard Christian? Uh, I think it's a, uh, it's a well-known uh, stand-up comedy comedian. Okay, yes. So you're wrong. <laughs> so you, so you I, have, I said I think. Yeah. You have to know who Leonard Christian is in order to say this sentence properly. Leonard Christian is a critic. A critic. Uh, a reviewer. Okay? So, uh, okay, so a frustrated man. Okay, well, that, no, no, no. So my question is, from Jerry and Ronnie's perspective, is this a good guy or a bad guy? It's a guy to be to be careful of. I guess. That's right. He's a dangerous guy, right? Yeah. Right? So, yeah. when you say this sentence, you have to sound worried or nervous. Yeah. Okay, try it again. You know, Leonard Christians is here. Oh, sorry. You know, Leonard Christians is here. That was much, much better. That's right. So, if I were going to say it, you have to think about the body language. You know, Leonard Christian's here. Eyes are open. You know, you're kind of nervous. That was really good. That sounded much better. Um, so, this sentence can really change intonation depending on who this person is. Right? Very good. And and this one too. I want it stronger. Hey, I don't do bits. Hey, I don't do bits. Yeah, be be more angry. I don't do bits. Hey, I don't do bits. There you go. Bits. Bits. Lots of students wrote bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do that. I don't do bits, bitch. Yeah, uh, yeah. It might have been not, it's cool. bits. Keep that s. <laughs> Now, Miguel, you mispronounced this word again. Oh, yes, I know. I realized later on. Toby. That's right. Not Tubby. Not Tubby. Toby. Uh. If you call a woman Tubby, what will she do to you? I don't know. Uh, fresh kiss in me? <laughs> Marek, if you call a woman Tubby, what will she do to you? I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> She'll probably kill you, okay? Yeah. I don't. <laughs> what does, so we got to be careful with the pronunciation. Tubby. What does tubby mean? Yeah. Chubby. Let's be honest. It means yeah, fat. <laughs> Are so, you a whale? Yeah. So if the woman's name is Toby and you say tubby, you will die. I'm sure you will die. Well, I, I, I might, I might, I don't know. I might try to sort it out. No, I, I meant curvy. Curvy, yeah, right. Yeah. Well, tubby and curvy are very far, very far. Very far, wow. Okay. <laughs> okay, let me go to Hashmik. Hashmik, your pronunciation was perfect, but what's the American pronunciation? Well, the American pronunciation for or touch them. Oh, uh, touch, touch them. Touch, oh. touch them. Touch them. Yes, there you go. Exactly. So actually, we can get rid of this th and we can say touch them. Touch them. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. So do that again. Touch. Touch them. Touch. Touch them. Perfect. What do we got next here? This is Jerry's line. Uh, Jerry, uh, try this. Try, try Jerry's line one more time, please. Uh, yeah. Why don't you guys get a table so you have a good seat? 
Uh, yeah, you said before and right now, you, you keep wanting to add the word uh. Oh, okay. Okay, and also... Yeah. Um, yeah um, don't don't make it so much of a you. Uh, make it more of a ya. Yeah. Can you try it again, please? Yeah, why don't you guys get a table so you'll have good seats? No, that was wrong. I, I told you wrong. Hold on a second. Okay. Why don't you guys get a table? Why don't you guys get a table? Why don't you guys get a table? Oh, uh, that here it is. Okay, here it is. Get a table. Get a table. Why don't you guys get a table? Why is it slow? Uh, can you say it a little bit faster, Marek? Why don't you guys get a table? Yeah, I don't know why, but uh, and and I do this specifically for you to get rid of that European. May I try once more? Yes. Why don't you guys get a table? Okay, that sounded better. Why don't you guys get a table? Because I made flap D. Made yeah, this one. that's right. That's right. Get a table. Why don't you? Why don't you guys get a table? Perfect. So that have sounded, a good seats. Uh, yes. Now it sounds much better. Marek, one more time, please. Why don't you guys get a table so you have good seats? There you go. Now we got it. Excellent job. Uh, and you know this one. Can you move out of the... Uh, this is uh, 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 Hashmik. Hashmik. Um, so out of the... How do we say that quickly in American pronunciation? Out of the way. Out of the way. Out of the, out of the way. Out of the way. Great job. Can you move out of the way? Can you move out of, out of the way? Excellent job. And bald spot. Bald spot. Okay, so this is a tough word for lots of people. We've got bold and bald. Okay? Um, and bald is the same as bald and bald. Okay, so this, these three words all sound the same. They're the same pronunciation. This has a strong O sound, so when you hear it, it sounds like O, bold, bold. But this, uh, these words have a strong A-W sound, ah, ah. So try it again, bold, bald. Bold, bold. Okay, so this A-W sound is really difficult, and I'm going to try and make a picture. To, uh, no, no, I'm going to try, I'll make a picture for you. So these are your upper teeth, and these are your lower teeth. This is your mouth, and usually your tongue sits like this inside your mouth, right? Do you understand my picture? Okay, good. So, when we make the A-W sound, this is really hard skin, and then right about here, the skin becomes kind of soft. And what you need to do is you need to take your tongue and actually put it into the soft area. So, it's, I'm going to show you my image here. So it's like this. Ah. So the tongue is down in the soft skin. Ah. Okay. Ball. Ball. That sound it good job. That was really good. I know it's difficult and it feels strange, but once again it's different. So let's try those two words. Bold bald. Bold. Bald. Bingo! Perfect, perfect. So let's try it in the sentence. Um, I didn't pay a cover charge to stare at your bald spot. I didn't pay a cover charge to start to stare uh, at your at your uh, bald. That's right. At your bald spot. I 
<laughs> it's a tough one. I know it's tough. Yeah. And it's the first time you do it, it feels very strange. Ball spot. Perfect. There you go. Now, uh, Miguel, are you developing a bald spot? Uh, not really. Oh, you're lucky. Marek, how about you? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not developing. I did already. Oh, you have one. You have a good one? A glass bigger than yours. Is it bigger than mine? <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, next time I will uh, use the camera. But, uh, Good, we can compare bald spots. <laughs> bald spots. <laughs> Are you sure, Miguel? M Miguel oh, you're fine, you're fine. fine. You're behind, you have to do something about it. He's working on a widow's peak. Oh, okay. I'm thinning, he's thinning a little bit here in the front. Yeah. No. But the back is fine. Uh, may, may I say something? Uh, if you develop the frontal boldness, it means you are thinker. If you develop at the top, it means you about sex. So if you develop both, you're thinking oh about God. sex. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> I'm developing the, the kind, you know, thinking about sex. Uh-huh, yeah, I think, well, I, according to your rules, me too. I'm, I'm losing it here and here. Yeah, oh boy. And, and Miguel is only thinking. He's very oh, philosophical. Yeah. Thinking too much. <laughs> there you go. Okay, um, I think we have a couple of more points I should make. No, we're going right to the next scene. Okay, let's go to the next scene, everybody. Let me erase my scribble. We got Jerry and Toby again. So I'll have uh, Hashmik be Toby again, please. And uh, who was Jerry last time? That was uh, All right. Marek. Okay, so this time Miguel, Miguel be Jerry. And... And we're going to go straight through. Uh, Kramer and Ronnie uh, will be uh, Marek. Is that okay? Yes. All right, let's do it. So we're starting uh, right here. We're going to go through both scenes here. Uh, go for it, guys. Oh, that's okay. Men definitely hit the remote button more than women. Oh, really, really, that's that's. Just... Yes, yeah. See? Men don't care what's on TV. Men only care what else is on TV. Yes, yes, right on, right on. See? Uh, women really want to see what the show is before they change the channel. Oh, that's so true, yes. Uh, uh, that's why men hunt and women nest. Boo, boo, boo. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah, all right. So anyway. What was I what was I talking about? Very good. Hey. Hey. What's the deal? Who's going on there? I invite you down here. I have an important show. And she heckles me? Look, she didn't mean anything. Well, what's the matter with her? Is she crazy? She's just being enthusiastic, that's all. Hey, what is wrong with you? Me? Nothing wrong with me. You boo me? You hit? You didn't stop blathering throughout the, sh the whole set? Oh, come on. I, I thought you were, uh, you were a pro. Uh, that's, uh, that's a part of the show. No, not a part of the show. Booing and hazing are not part of the show. You boo puppets. You hit villains inside the movies. Well, uh, 
just the way I express myself. Uh, how are you gonna make it uh, in, in this business if you can't take it? Oh, I can take it. Uh, let's go. Hey man, good set. <laughs> okay, very good. Uh, great job, everybody. Let me just hit a couple of words here. Miguel, this word. Yeah. Women. 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 W not we, with, women. W women. There you go. There you go. Women. Perfect. Women. Oh, okay. Uh, intonation for this one. Marek, one more time. Look, she didn't mean anything. She didn't mean anything. Um, she didn't mean anything. She didn't mean anything. Mm. Now I'm not sure to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I think it's more of a, she didn't mean anything. Look, she didn't mean anything. Yeah, anything. And actually, it's, it, it's not really stronger, but there is kind of a, a long uh, vowel sound for this. She didn't mean anything. Well, actually, we could intonate it, too. Look, she didn't mean anything. No, no, no. You're, you're emphasizing any, and I want you to emphasize this. Oh, Let's okay. listen to the original. Actually, hold on a second. Yeah. Let me get uh, the original out. Un moment. Do. Do. She had an important show and she heckles me. Look, she didn't mean anything. She didn't mean oh, anything. Mean. Oh, yeah. That's right. There we go. She didn't mean anything. She didn't mean anything. She didn't mean anything. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Good job. Yep. I knew something was off. Something was off. Perfect. Good job. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get you on your R sound this time, Hashmik. So... That's the way I express myself. That's the, that's the way I express myself. Very good. Express. 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 Perfect. Express. How are you going to make it? How are, how are you going to make it? Perfect job. Good job. And then intonation. If you can't take it. If you can't take it. Perfect. And here intonation is I. I can take it. I can take it. Uh, this is, this is, uh, no, uh, yeah. Oh. Oh, I can take it. Oh, I can take it. Uh, hold on a second. Let me double check this. Yeah. Oh, I can take it. Oh, I can take it. Oh, I can take it. Yeah. I can. I can. Oh, I can take it. Oh, I can take it. Oh, I can take it. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. And that's it. Once again, great job. Club Soda. Uh, Marek, you capitalized it. It actually uh, can be capitalized, uh, but that's why I showed many brand names. Uh, we can actually use it as a small, uh, small CS2. Uh, these are props, goofy props, squirt guns, goosebumps, uh, bald spot, boo. Puppets, villains, and that's pretty much it. Any questions? Did you guys see the American Culture Corner? Uh, yeah, I saw. I saw how, how was it, Marek? Was it okay? Oh, yes, yes. Did you enjoy the uh, comedy? Well, it, it feels old right now. Uh, yeah, after after years, I, I used to watch uh, back in Poland, you know, Oliver Hardy and, and the other guy. Yeah, yeah. Flip and flap. Or, I know. It's very about. popular. I, I used to laugh a lot, but now it it uh, looks a little dated, and uh, yeah, it's not well. And I'm older. <laughs> it was for children more. Like. Right, right, right. It it really is a. Uh, uh, it's it's like cute, right? Yes, but all those stunts they were making by themselves. So exactly. Uh, and you mentioned the guy on the uh, on the train. 
Buster Keaton. That was basically, yeah. Yeah, he has a very famous stunt where a building falls through him. Yeah, he stands there. They have to measure the window locations. So. Can you imagine a real actor now doing that stunt? No. That, that's just a chance. Oh, that's just amazing. Yeah, yeah. Those, those guys were crazy. And those guys, uh, and, and women, of course, they made lots of movies, not just, you know, one every three years. They were making like 15 a year. It's very interesting. If you haven't seen uh, the ACC silent films, um, it's on Dropbox, and I, I think I put it on YouTube, too. Uh, check it out. It's 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 uh, very interesting. I was debating whether or not I would uh, discuss villains or silent films, and uh, I, I decided to go with silent movies, silent films, and I'm glad I did. It was very interesting. I learned a lot. It was kind of funny. But the guy on the on the railway, it looks like a chiropractor. It looks like Sergey. <laughs> you, know, you know a chiropractor? Shane? A what? Chiropractor. A chiropractor, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it make, makes adjustments, you know, cracking. There you go. Well, I'm recording this, so if Sergey watches this video, I'm expecting an email from Sergey. <laughs> All right. What's your favorite uh, comedian? Oh, favorite comedians today. You mean um, right now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, I love the Zulander guy. What's yeah, I keep, I keep Ben forgetting. Stiller. Ben Stiller. I, I somehow as a comedian, right? Uh, he's an he's an actor comedian. That's right. Mm. Yeah. Ben Stiller is crazy. Ben Stiller, yeah. The Zoolander and How I Met or Meet the Parents. Oh God, those are so funny. Uh. My favorite line in Meet the Parents was uh, when when Gaylord, what's his name? Gaylord what? <laughs> Don't. I can't remember. Anyway, when when Gaylord was telling the father how. <laughs> He used to milk the cats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know his last name. I don't. I don't want to repeat. I know it sounds too dangerous. The <laughs> same here. Uh, too dangerous. Yeah, yeah. You gotta be careful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then the who's the guy with the funny nose? Uh, the blonde one, right? Yeah, the blonde uh, guy. Oh, he was so funny too. Wilson, Wilson. Yeah, Wilson. Owen Wilson. Owen Wilson. Owen Wilson. Jackie Chan and Owen Wilson, Ben Stiller. Those guys oh, are really. It was also funny, funny. Yeah. Oh God. I I I like his play when when they played the uh, water. Uh, water you know, polo. Yeah. <laughs> Just, oh. He came with with those. <laughs> Bikini. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> oh, was he was also in the medical field. Yeah, he was yeah. A nurse, right? <laughs> yeah, he was a nurse. So, so they asked him. Uh, yeah. So, how is your portfolio? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, Hashmik, do you know the movies we're talking about? Um, not all, not all of it, all of them. We're we're talking about two two movies. Uh, one is Zoolander, and uh, and the other is Meet the Parents. And uh, these movies were made by a guy named Ben Stiller. And I'll tell you some really interesting fact. Do you know who Ben Stiller's father is? Yeah, I do, I do. Who is it? 
well, George's father. That's right. George Costanza's father in the sitcom is in real life Ben Stiller's father. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy family. Okay. Questions about anything? I have one question, if you don't mind, Shane. Not at all. Taking a lot of time today, but no problem. Uh, when, when there is the sentence regarding the cover charge. Yeah. Uh, where, where is it? Uh, right here. Oh, hey, big head. Yeah. For me, I felt like she should have said, "Why didn't I didn't pay the cover charge to stare at your bald spot?" Ah, you mean grammatically? Yeah, I mean, and uh, because she knows that she paid already cover charge, they okay. know what they are talking about. So this is I don't know. That that's my feeling. Maybe you know, I want to now remember uh, know your opinion simply. Yeah, I would say uh, in two. You would say uh, a I would say charge, a. right? Yeah. Um, and the reason is uh, the nuance. The nuance is uh, single, a single cover charge. Okay, um, and it could be it could be a double cover charge for two people. Uh, it could be a cover charge for three people. Okay, um, so mm -hmm. cover charge is the key. But whether it's uh, uh, one or two or three people cover charge, we don't know. So in this situation, we could just say, uh. Now, we could also say the, I didn't pay the cover charge. And we could say that, I didn't pay that cover charge. Oh, actually, that would be, I think, in my opinion, the best. OK, but if you I say don't that, know. I, if you say I that, say. If, if you say that, then you're going to have to point. I didn't pay that cover charge. So you're going to point to the price. Oh, okay. Or you're going to point to the place where you paid, okay? So, so that is going to be really specific. Mm -hmm. uh, the is fine because you and I both know. Um, but in this case, I would also probably naturally say uh. Um, okay. Yeah. No, and, that, that's that's what I wanted to hear because. Uh... Do you ever pay a cover charge? Do you ever go someplace that requires a cover charge? I went a few times, yeah, for some live entertainment. Exactly. Was it like a bar? With a pole. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, if there's <laughs> if there's a if there's any type of entertainment, uh, you generally have to pay a cover charge. I'm guessing ten dollars and one beer. I don't remember, Shane. It was a long time ago. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we all have a pet. <laughs> oh yes. Oh yes. Where is Mrs. Gruzowski? Oh no! Actually, I went a few times also with my wife. Oh wow! Your wife is cool. <laughs> Oh no, she wanted to see how it looks like, so what's this, you know. <laughs> yeah. Once or twice is enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now Miguel, I hope you don't do that. What, Shane? Never mind. I feel sorry for Ahashmi because she probably has no idea uh what what we're talking about. But it's not important. What? No. Going to those places? <laughs> well, no. Miguel, you like live music. So do you ever go to bars in the UK where they charge a cover charge? I don't, I don't go out here. I hardly go out here. So. You're like me. I don't know, Shane, but I, never I, don't, I don't really have a social life here. You're like me. <laughs> Maybe it's my it's my fault. It's my fault. I'm not interested. 
Yeah, you're not proactive, but that's that's okay. But but that's here. Maybe somewhere else might be a little bit different. Uh, sure. If you go to New Orleans, it would be different. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh. Don't get me started. <laughs> there you go. I like New, New Orleans. Oh, he loves New Orleans. That's his fantasy. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Wow. That's... And I, I heard the food is great. Oh, I have a... I'm a... I don't know if I ever shared uh, a website uh, about New Orleans. I know that they call it. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm going to spell it here. Uh, Shane, like this. N l o l o. N l o l o. So n o l o. No lo. Yeah. Never. I don't know why. I didn't do. Uh, uh, res any research so but I, I'm I will share the uh, the website about uh, it's a touristic kind of website about New Orleans oh okay okay I'll, sh I'll share it I'll post it on the community so you guys can see it okay it's, it's very very nice oh make it, it makes me cry Ah, <laughs> uh, you get very emotional when people talk about. Uh, I, I I I cry my heart out like a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You guys did a great job today, uh, and once again, I want to especially say to Hashmik, uh, really great. It was your first time uh, reading with the group, and uh, you did a really good job. A really really good job. Did you have any exposure to English uh, speaking people or you learned it by yourself? Hashmik, did you hear the question? No. Uh, I didn't get the... One more time, Marek, or should I ask? Oh, did you have any exposure to English speaking people or you learned it all by yourself? Uh, actually, uh, I um, I uh, studied uh, some English uh, at school, uh, in elementary school, and uh, uh, I uh, after that I uh, uh, followed the uh, uh, Russian uh, two years ago. Wow! Well, then you have really good uh, language skill, not like me. <laughs> no, you are very good. Wow, I, uh, yeah, I, I, that's amazing. Or? To learn a little bit in school and then to follow uh, my videos for two years, you are a model student. That is really yeah. outstanding. And you had a very good coach, I guess. <laughs> Probably, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not kidding. Oh, wow. Yeah, it, you know, it, it, there, there are many good coaches, but it, it, at the end of the day, it, it depends on you, uh, how much energy and time you invest. And uh, uh, we've, got some, we've got some students who have improved amazingly, uh, tremendous improvement, and, uh, and I'm really so proud of them. Um, and I'm, I'm happy that my classes uh, motivate them or, or are interesting to them because that's the key. If you can maintain your motivation and your interest, mm -hmm. you'll keep going. Yeah. Uh, that's the key. Yeah, Shane, but your philosophy is very, it's great. Not everyone has it. I don't know why, but. Well, I'll tell you, you know, teachers are anal. Uh, and I'm not a teacher. I'm, I'm pragmatic, uh, you know. And I think it's it's for most people uh, we like reality, not theory. <laughs> uh -huh. And 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 I remember you, uh, yeah. You you always 
uh, stress it. You always point out to the fact that Seinfeld is a gold mine, and you know the longer uh, the, the you know the longer it, it, it goes on, the more right I think you are. Yeah, uh, we've I've looked at so many dramas and sitcoms and movies and they're all great you know all of them have advantages and interesting things but overall Seinfeld is really practical it's very useful for a student and uh, it's older I know it's old it's 20 years old but it doesn't matter the language that they use the expressions the situations the pronunciation absolutely uh, applicable today. The only funny thing is when they use a, a pager or a, a, a fax machine, that's when it's funny because obviously that's a long time ago. Yeah. But, but I think the, the, the ESL <laughs> is kind of like, a, like an university for ESL students. Yeah, it's a good example, yeah, good analogy. So that's why yeah, I think it's a uh, really, really uh, an amazing finding. Seinfeld University. Yeah, yeah, for ESL students. There you go. I like so, it. Yeah, yeah. I have to go right now. I'm going to take off. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marek. Thank it's you great guys. to see you. And I'll Thank see you, you next Marek. week. Thank you. See you guys next right. week. Yeah. Okay. Very good. And Miguel and Hashmik, you guys have a fantastic week also. And oh. I will see you next Friday. Shane, yeah. Now, oh, now that Marek went off, went off, but I wanted to, you know, to talk about, you know, briefly, you know, shortly about the uh, the Jerry's uh, sentence going on tonight. Yeah, maybe the 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 trick to get that uh, native feel down, because you many times you always you very often say that uh, going has three sounds, right? Going, uh, like yeah, uh, yes, yeah, uh, yeah, going, and, going, and and what? And gone, gone, gone. Very short, right? Yeah. yeah. Maybe if we use, if we keep, if we really uh, hold in mind that short sound and practice, we can get that feel, that native feel. What do you think? Gun. Going out, yeah. Uh, going on, going on. It's definitely going on the night. Sound. Going on tonight. But the, his biggest problem was the tonight. That's where he was. Ah, yeah, he was having a problem with the G, too. But you're right. Going, going. It's not really a W. It's fast. Going on tonight. Going on tonight. Going on tonight. That's, it's a really tough one. Try it, Miguel. So if we use the third sound, you 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 have you have taught us. Uh -huh. It's it's best. What do you think? Oh, uh, definitely. Yeah, this is the sound to use yeah. for the Jerry style. Go, That's right. Go, going on tonight. Going on tonight? Going on tonight? <laughs> <laughs> so let's just do this. Okay. Going on? Going on? No. Going on? Going on? Going on tonight? Going on tonight? That was not too bad. Going on tonight? Going on tonight? Going on tonight? Going on tonight? Say it slow. Going okay. on tonight. Going 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 on tonight. That not too bad. I don't know if it's a hundred percent understandable, but that was pretty darn good. Yeah. Uh, let's have Hashmik. Hashmik, you want to try? I like it. Like it. Oh. Going on tonight. Going on tonight. Wow, that was really good. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Going on tonight? Going on tonight? <laughs> that was really good. That was really good. Great, I'm great, impressed. great. Marek would be angry. Marek has lived oh. in Canada for over 20 years. <laughs> great job. Very, very good. 
You guys have a great week. I'm going to go cook dinner and then prepare uh, DDM 119, okay? All right, sir. Take care. Uh, enjoy your dinner. Thank you. But I, uh, I'm sorry, Miguel, what time is it? You need to go to bed. Uh, well, it's not too bad. It's, uh, it's 140. 20 to 2. 20 to 2. You were up very late last night, too. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, I, I work, uh, I do evening shift, uh, so, you know, I start working at 5 o'clock. Okay, okay, all right. So I can, you know, kind of sleep in. That's good. Hashmik, what time is it where you are? Yeah. Eight fourteen <laughs> in the morning. Uh, no, um, uh, it's eight forty in the morning. Uh, I don't have the clock. <laughs> I'm curious. I'm curious there. Yeah. Well, you have a fantastic Saturday. Okay. Okay. Great, Miguel. You too. Get some good sleep. Okay. Okay, Shane, and uh, move to, Mon to Montana. I know. <laughs> I want to move to Montana. <laughs>